Does it feel like it's just been bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news, always, every time you turn on the news, it's like bad news. And then finally, we have some good news. and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another mukbang. Today, you're watching another episode of Munching Mondays, which is my mukbang series, and mukbang is an eating show, so we're gonna be eating together, and we're gonna be chatting, so if you guys like that sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And today, guys, we are having a Vietnamese feast. Well, actually, this is a Vietnamese and Thai feast because we've got some Vietnamese vermicelli. Oh my God, how good does this look? There's some uh, spring rolls, there's some mock beef on top, also some uh, bean curd situation. Oh my God, you guys, I am so excited. And then of course the rice noodles, the vegan fish sauce, okay. We also have some tom yum soup, actually. So this is basically like Vietnamese and Thai, I believe. Yes, tom yum soup is Thai, yes. So today, guys, I got my food from a local restaurant here in Calgary. It's definitely, other than my own cafe, <laughs> it's definitely one of my favorite vegan places. And I thought I would, you know, support my local vegan businesses, guys, okay? So in the next few mukbangs, you might just see me eating a lot of food from different uh, local vegan places or places with vegan options. Just because, you know, it's hard times right now. I wanna, you know, support my local community here, especially the vegan places. Last week, I did a mukbang with the food from my cafe, and today we are eating food from Tamarind. So this place is uh, mostly Vietnamese food. They have such good vegan pho. Everything on their menu is vegan. So I'm very excited. I can't wait to dig in. Today, I decided to get the vermicelli because um, I feel like I've done a pho mukbang before, and I thought I would do a vermicelli mukbang. And then, of course, though, I had to have some soup. Let me actually try this soup. I've actually never tried their tom yam. I usually get their pho, but... Today, I decided to get something a bit different. Mmm. Actually, I have tried their tom yum now that I think about it. Mm, I love tom yum soup, you guys. If you haven't tried tom yum soup, it's like slightly sour, a little bit sweet, and um, slightly spicy. Mmm. Mmm. It's actually really good with rice. Mmm. All right, you guys. So, we're gonna... We are gonna pour this, baby. I'm gonna leave a little bit because I like to dip the spring rolls, okay? Whew. And just a little quick friendly reminder to um, support your own local businesses as well, especially the vegan places, guys. Whew. Let's get started. So let's have a spring roll. Mm, I'm gonna dip it in the sauce. Mm. Mm. Noodles. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's so good. So, so good. There's also tofu in this uh, tom yum soup. Mm. Oh my God. Guys, put a little bit of sriracha, of course. You gotta have the sriracha with the Vietnamese noodles, you know? Oh, I'm so excited. Mm. So you guys, how are you? <laughs> I can't wait to eat at all of the different local places. I realized the other day that actually in my city, I live in Calgary, by the way, if you guys don't know, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. In my city, actually, the vegan options are really interesting. There are actually lots of vegan Asian options. Isn't that interesting? And they're all like across the board. So each place has its own like Asian, you know, type of cuisine, which I found really interesting. So my place, which is Savage Cafe, we obviously have like Korean inspired food. So we do the Korean vegan stuff. And then this place obviously does the Vietnamese, mostly the Vietnamese stuff. And then there's another place called Hearts Choices and they do mostly Thai vegan food. And then there's also a place that does um, Chinese vegan food. That place is called Happy Veggie House. They do like Chinese food. Oh, there's another place, a new place. They do like sushi. It's called Whole Life Go. So we've got all the, well, not all the Asian countries, but a lot of the main Asian countries covered in the vegan food world. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Mm. I'm gonna try their mock beef. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. So good. This is their bean curd. This is the best. 
Look at that, doesn't that look like meat? So good. Mm. Of course, guys, I've got bubbly, okay? This time I got the lime. This was on sale, the lime one. <laughs> you know how the stereotype is that, like, if you're vegan, you're, like, white? If you're Asian, you can't be vegan. But, like, it's interesting that so many of the vegan options here in my city are, like, Asian food. <laughs> mm. I always say Asian food is, like, so great to veganize. A lot of it is very heavily plant-based anyways. Mmm. You know what food is hard to veganize? French, German, that's hard to veganize. Not impossible, just a little harder because they're much more reliant on, you know, meat, heavily meat-based. Like meat and butter, that's French, right? <laughs> Guys, I'm so happy, I love food. Mm. Oh, Tom Yum soup, so good. The first time I tried Tom Yum soup, it was by accident. I was traveling in Bangkok. Uh, this was back in 2011, when I actually did an exchange in Singapore. And I was in Bangkok with a few of my friends. And this is before I was vegan. And I remember like just randomly going to this like hole in the wall place with just no English menus, just Thai, you know, Thai words. <laughs> And then I don't know what we just did, but we just like ordered whatever. That's the unfortunate part. Now I can't really do that, okay? I can't just like go into a place and be like, oh, I don't understand this menu, but can you just give me whatever? <laughs> Unless it's a vegan restaurant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Spring roll. Mm. Mm. So good. All right, we gotta get some noodle. But yeah, we ordered, I remember I ordered some random thing and I didn't even know what Tom Yum soup was at the time. And then I don't know how I found out it was Tom Yum soup later, but I basically ate it and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And that's the first time I had Tom Yum soup. And then I remember going to different places that were a little bit more touristy and then ordering Tom Yum soup in those places and it was just not as good. All right, so we got some noodles. We got some of the mock beef, we got some veg. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Mm. I'm so happy. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. I really want to go back to Asia as a vegan because I have never been to Asia as a vegan. Mm hmm. Last time I was in Asia, I was like full on meat eater, you know? Anyway. Mm. Speaking of Asia, speaking of Singapore, have you guys heard that Singapore now is the first place to have lab grown meat? being served, I think. Let me just let me just pull up the article here. I really wanted to like talk about this because I think it's really interesting. Let me just, let me search it up, okay? Singapore becomes the first country to approve lab-grown meat. So, wow, honestly, I'm amazed. Finally, I feel like we've been talking about this for the last like few years, but like time goes by really fast. And I think the first time I heard about this, it was probably about like five, six years ago. Anyways, so apparently this is cultured chicken. Well, it is actually chicken, I guess. And it's made by the same company that does just mayo and just egg. Yeah, I guess they will debut, the chicken bites will debut. I don't know why I'm doing this because it's actually chicken. It's just like lab grown chicken. Yeah, it'll debut in a Singapore restaurant with plans for wider expansion into dining and retail establishments. I wonder how much it is. Oh, it says 
the product would be priced at parity with premium chicken. I don't know what premium chicken costs, okay? I don't know, this is like very exciting. I feel like it's exciting. Obviously vegans, most of us probably won't go and eat this chicken because it's still chicken. Like I'm definitely not gonna eat cultured chicken, <laughs> but it's great for, actually no, leave me, leave me a comment down below. If you're vegan, leave me a comment if you would eat like the cultured chicken or cultured meat. I would not, I think I would eat cultured fish, okay? I think I said this before, if they do like a cultured, any sort of fish, I'll probably eat it, okay? But there's something about meat that grosses me out, so I wouldn't eat meat again, but um, yeah. What about you guys? Would you eat like the cultured uh, meat since it's no longer, you know, abusive, right? They can make the meat without killing an animal. Isn't that amazing? Mmm. 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 Oh, there's giant piece of bean curd. Mm. Mm. So yeah, I wish I was still in Singapore. <laughs> So I can like witness this happening or get people to come and try this like cultured chicken. Mm. I wonder how they would be able to distribute this. Like I really want wide distribution. <laughs> Maybe we need to invest in Just Egg. Is the company called Just Egg or is it just called Just? Oh, it's called Hampton Creek, right? Anyway. Maybe us vegans should invest so that we can really like spread this far and wide. Um, you know what? I feel like it's possible. I remember when it first, when people started first talking about this, I was like, it's probably gonna be like so expensive that like no one's gonna wanna eat it. But if they're pricing it the same as like premium, premium chicken, whatever that is, then I think it, you know, it could be, it could be doable. And this is just the initial stages, guys. Mm hmm that means the possibilities are there. I wonder why Singapore, of all places, um, was the first place to approve it. Anyone from Singapore? Let me know, guys. Singapore is definitely very like modern and very like, I guess, innovative. So I guess it's not like super surprising, but also it's like, I don't know, it's still kind of surprising. Mm. Mm. It's also a very small country. It's like very, very small. So maybe it's easier to approve things when the country is so small. So that could be it. It's basically like a city country, right? So it's a city slash country, it's an island. So I could imagine that it could be like a little bit easier to approve this sort of thing. Whereas like bigger countries, there's like a lot more things to go through to approve something like that. But anyway, mm. I wonder when they're gonna launch. Mm -hmm. So insane. But yeah, I'm all for it. I think this is the future. We need to get lab grown everything. Mm. Mm. I'm wondering if meat-eating people would be willing to try it and like the percentage of people that are willing to try it. I mean like what's the excuse, genuinely? Ooh, there's a pineapple in here. Ooh. Mm. 
So geil. Mm. Very exciting news. If they can do this on a grand, massive scale, think about the things that we could do in terms of our environment. If they can do this, it's a lot more sustainable. It's a lot more environmentally friendly. It's amazing. I can't wait to see what happens. <laughs> so maybe we need to invest in these companies that are doing all these things just so we can see them grow, you know? Mm. Like, what would be the argument against it? That it's like weird because it's grown in a lab? I mean, come on. If it's the same thing, it's like people are gonna play this whole like, oh, it's not natural card. It's like, okay, factory farms are not natural. Sorry. Mm hmm. Plus, they're all like injected with hormones. So. And also living in like disgusting conditions. Mm hmm. Would you rather eat a piece of meat that was living in a disgusting condition, that was tortured, that lived this like horrific life, probably full of like stress hormones and all kinds of stuff, pumped with all kinds of antibiotics and hormones and whatever, and then killed, okay, in a needless death? Or would you rather just eat a little thing that was grown? in a lab, but it's pretty much the same in terms of the chemical compounds. I don't know how to talk scientifically, but it's pretty much the same as just regular meat, except for without all those like stress hormones and without all of the nastiness and all the torture and all the animal suffering. It's like, I don't know, like what's what's the excuse? What is the, what is the reason? Like if people say no to that, come on. And if they can make it affordable, oh my God. Like we just can't afford to keep doing what we're doing in the grand scale that we're doing it, you know? Purely from just a selfish point of view as a human and as a person that lives on this earth, we just can't keep doing things just from an environmental perspective. And then of course you bring in the animal suffering argument and it's like, okay, obviously we can't keep doing this. So yeah, that's exciting news. I do miss Singapore, I wanna go back. I wanted to go back to Asia, you know, maybe this year, but of course it didn't happen. <laughs> because I, guys, I haven't been to Korea, my motherland, in like 10 years at this point. Has it been 10 years? Nine years, it's been nine years. Yeah, so that's the last time I was in Asia. It's very sad. Yeah, I feel like time just goes by so fast.
Mm. Mm hmm. My friends, I love food. I love Asian food. I love Vietnamese food. Mm, that was so good, guys. I'm gonna save the rest. Whew, I just all of a sudden got like super full until just two seconds ago, I was fine. And then now I'm like, <laughs> you guys, I was so good. I'm so content. I'm so happy. And finally, I'm so happy with such good news. <laughs> Does it feel like it's just been bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news, always, every time you turn on the news, it's like bad news. And then finally, we have some good news, good vegan news. I'm so excited. I'm just so excited for what could, what could this mean, you know? I'm hoping that it becomes a norm and I'm hoping that one day we can just replace, you know, all of the factory farms with just cultured meat farms, okay? I mean, how amazing would that be? Because then people can still just eat whatever meat they want to eat. I mean, it's a bit weird, <laughs> not gonna lie. It's a little bit of a weird um, future, okay? It's almost like a, not a dystopian future. I feel like we're living the dystopia right now, okay? But if we have like cultured meat farms, it's like a utopian future. You can have your cake and eat it too. You don't have to kill the animals. You can still eat the cultured meat. Again, it's a bit weird, okay? I get it, but is it weirder than having factory farms? No. So yeah, would you eat it guys? Like, would you eat the cultured meat? Let me know. At the end of the day, if you miss the taste and if you can eat the same thing without harming animals, there's really no, like, what is the excuse? What is the excuse? I wonder if they can do this with like eggs or like, I don't know, like cheese or something. <laughs> like, can they do this with like other animal products? Like, I don't know. Anyway, guys, Whew. so yeah, guys, that was my mukbang. I hope you guys enjoyed. I had a great time, of course, as always. I always enjoy eating, okay? <laughs>